Last week, we talked about um, Christian nationalism. And, you know, I just want to touch on that for a minute. Uh, you, you, you understand we're not anti-American or anti-government or anti-law and order or anything like that. It's just as Christian believers in the world, you know, uh, our, our, our kingdom is not of this world, right? And, and we have got to look, and especially as end-time Christians, we have got to look at, at the world through those lenses that, that we are in the world, but we're not of the world. And yes, we're going to have to, and we do now, have to navigate our, our way through this world and through its systems. Um, but so did Daniel. You know, he, he navigated his way through, uh, the, let's see, the, the Babylonian Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, I think it was. And um, was there another one there? Not I guess it was those two. And, but but he, was, um, he overcame. And, and not only overcame, but, I mean, he was uh, very much promoted in those, those uh, empires that, that he lived in. And this is what God wants of us. Um, he wants us to uh, not lose sight of the fact that we, are, we belong to God and that, that our kingdom is his kingdom. And, and uh, we're going to get a little into this tonight. But I just want to, to be very clear that, you know, we're not anarchist, uh, you know, um, or anything like that. Not even close. Uh, we're we're anti evil. We're anti devil, right? But um, you know, I I just want to be sure that that everyone understands that. And um, you know, this is the way it's going to be from now on. This is this is you know this is what we have to do before Jesus comes. Uh, this is the world we live in. And you know when it when it you know we've talked many times where uh, you know Jesus was prophesying, and he he says you know they they will they will take you in for, to, before the synagogues and and before governors and kings and you think you think well that's somebody else that'll be for somebody else well no uh, that probably is not for somebody else that's probably for people like us. And see, the, the way the society uh, all over the world, but in America, since we live here, society is being, um, you know, uh, they're, they're being mind controlled and they're being manipulated and, and corralled through a, a small gate. And that, that gate is not for us. And um, the... the there are people, probably uh, more Christian than you think, that are gonna, they're gonna call you to account on it. Uh, they're gonna wanna know, hey, what's the deal? How come you, you don't go through that gate? Why don't you conform to this? I mean, you know, and they, and they may have all the, what they think are great reasons, and, we're, and, and the Holy Spirit will give us, you know, a mouth and utterance at that time. That, that all of our enemies will not be able to refute, okay? And, um, and, 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 and it'll be a time to bear testimony. See, that's the thing. And that's what God wants to do. He, he wants people set free. And he wants people to understand uh, what is happening to them. And he's going to use his body to do it, right? And you as his body. Right. So, you know, um, like I was saying last week, not most people don't have the worldview that you have. They just don't. Most people do not understand biblical cosmology, that that Satan is the prince in the power of the air. Right. And that that he has all his hierarchy of uh, fallen angels and principalities and powers and spirits of wickedness and and all those kinds of things mm -hmm. and and that 
people in the world that don't have Jesus are, uh, well, let's read that to start with in Ephesians chapter 2. You know, people in the world, uh, even, even the Christian world, unfortunately, they don't understand a lot of the things that you understand. And they don't understand that uh, we live in a fallen world, not, not just mankind, but also creation, nature. Nature is, is uh, like it says, groaning and travail to be set free, right? Nature is a nightmare. They're used to it. They have they've adapted to it, but actually it's a real nightmare. I mean, you, do you, you think God intended for all of nature to prey upon anything less than them? No, God didn't intend that to happen. He, he didn't want that to happen. And um, because of the fall of Satan, this is the way it is. It's, it's perverted. And most people don't see that. And so they have a real skewed image of, you know, who is God? Why would he do that when actually God didn't do that? Yeah. It was subjected to that kind of frailty and futility, but it, it, wasn't, cre it wasn't God's uh, highest and best. It wasn't his highest will for it to be like that. And we understand that. But if you don't understand that, you think God's doing all that, right? And, and so you have an understanding of God that's really twisted. And, and you, you just, it, it's perplexing, right? But, you know, it says there in Ephesians 2, 2, verse 1, And you he made alive when you were dead, slain by your trespasses and sins in which at one time you walked habitually. Remember those days? Yeah, yes. I do too. Absolutely. You were following the course and fashion of this world. You were under the sway and the, the tendency of this present age, following the prince of the power of the air. You were obedient to and under the control of the Demon spirit that still constantly works in the sons of disobedient, disobedience, the careless and rebellious and unbelieving who go against the purposes of God. Among these, we as well as you once lived and conducted ourselves in the passions of our flesh, our behavior governed by our corrupt and sensual nature, obeying the impulses of the flesh and the thoughts of the mind, our cravings dictated by our senses and our dark imaginings. We were then by nature children of God's wrath and heirs of indignation like the rest of mankind. You know, a lot of people, well, I say a lot of people, who knows? I don't know. I don't know who listens to me or who doesn't, but our, our, my view of Israel, okay? Um, in Romans chapter 11, it says, at the present time, Israel is enemies with God, right? Mm -hmm. Well, no more or no less than the enemies we were with God before Jesus, right? No more or no less than any nationality on the planet that doesn't have Jesus, right? It's just that in, in um, evangelical Christianity, uh, it's, been, um, it's been said, you know, over the years, well, you don't mess with Israel or, you know... Uh, uh, Israel is the apple of God's eye, or um, you touch not God's anointed. Well, are they God's anointed? Uh, no, they aren't. It says they're enemies of God, right? But we're not picking on Israel. It's just what I'm picking on is that, look, look, okay, you guys aren't enemies of God, right? You, you, you are our new creations in Christ Jesus, Oh, I'm not messing with you. I'll never tell you anything. 
Because you're God's anointed. Is that how we do it? No. We, that would be unloving if we didn't. No, we call the body of Christ to account. Right? We, we preach God's um, uh, conditions that have to be met. <laughs> well, some people don't, but we do. See, we, we teach God's conditions and how they have to be met. But we can't, we, can't tell, we can't tell Israel that because they're God's anointed. Well, that's not right, and that's not loving Israel. And that's not God's will. It isn't God's will. God's will that Israel would be saved, right? And they will, and it says all Israel will be saved, right? For the sake uh, of the beloved. They are still beloved, right? It says, you know, and, and for the sake of their forefathers, God, God will keep his promise. He cannot lie and he cannot fail, okay? But they still have to come through Jesus, okay? And, and I want everyone to be very clear in understanding what I'm saying there. We're not anti-Semites, you know? We're not Nazis. We're just saying, hey, Israel, you know, Israel is actually their government, just like most governments around the world. They're evil. I mean, even the founding fathers of the United States of America looked at government as a necessary evil and that government should be limited. Is our government limited? No, not very much. And, and the, the, what is limited on our government, they're tr constantly trying to find loopholes and heck, if they can't find a loophole, well, you know what? Go ahead and break the law, and we'll get the lawyers on it later. And it'll be, you know, we'll figure all the cost of it into the, the price of doing business. Okay? And that's how it works today. There, you know, uh, justice, what is justice? Truth, what, what is truth? Just like Pilate said, right? Right? And, you know, I, you know, I make this statement uh, the United States of America is no longer um, uh, of the people, by the people, and for the people. It's of the corporations, by the corporations, and for the corporations. Right? Why? Why is that happening? Because the global elite own the corporations. Okay? And they have infiltrated the government. They have not stopped lobbying to Congress. Right? So the lobbyists go in there. They have lots of money. They, they you know, give vacations. And, hey, you can go to Epstein Island if you want to. Right? And pay off under the table and kickbacks and all kinds of things uh, to the politicians. And um, you, know what, you know what you call it when, you, when the corporations and the government are uh, in bed together. That's called corporatism, which, is, which actually is called fascism. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. And this is what we have in America, fascism. It's corporatism. And the American people have been cut out of the equation, except you have to pay for everything, American people. You know, in the last little episode we had the, over the last year, you know, I won't name it, so we'll, the video stay up. <laughs> uh, the, the last episode we had the last year, you know, they gave uh, trillions of dollars, right, to, to keep everything, uh, keep everybody happy. Well, you, you know, all those stimulus checks that everybody got from the government, you know, all, all the common people got, that was 3% of what was given away. The 97% went to the corporations. It, they're looting the treasury. And basically it's digits, and basically they're just saying, hey, the American people will have to pay it back. Because there is no free money. Nothing is free. They just add it to the debt. I think $9 trillion was added, something like that. This is an astronomical number. Yeah, right. Well, and, and they throw billions around like it's, you know, it's just words. Yeah. 
you know, you know, remember um, September the 10th, 2001? You don't remember that, do you? September the 11th is what we remember. Right. But on September the 10th, uh, it, was, uh, they it was brought before Congress that there was $2.3 trillion missing. Oh, hmm, wonder what happened. Nobody ever talked about it after that because 9-11 was such a big event. $2.3 trillion was missing. But see, this is the corrupt world that we live in. And because it is no longer a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, and it's basically been taken over, you realize there's six media corporations that run all the news in America now. In 1971, there were over 70. Yeah. It's been consolidated. I mean, you've seen those videos where they, they show uh, local news, even local news all over the country, you know, and, and they show clip after clip. They all say the same thing. I identical words, right? It's all scripted, bought, and paid for. Okay, and this is, this is part of that huge sword in Revelation chapter 6 the red horse. And see, you as awake, not woke, awake, right? Uh, end time Christian people, you, we get together and we can sort these things out. But think about people in the world who can't sort it out. They don't have the tools. They don't have the word. They don't have the Holy Spirit to sort it out. This is a difficult thing, right? Not, not just difficult, it's just they're captured, right? You, you know, I, go, go over there to Habakkuk chapter 1. I'm just saying these things because I'm telling you that most people don't understand things like you y'all understand things. You know. Habakkuk 1 uh, verse 13, he, he says to God, you are of purer eyes than to behold evil and cannot look uh, upon injustice. Why then do you look upon the plunderer why are you silent when the wicked one destroys him who is more righteous than he? Why do you make men like the fish of the sea, like reptiles and creeping things that have no ruler? Uh, the devil brings all of them up with his hook. And he captures and drags them out with his net. He gathers them with his drag net. He rejoices and is in high spirits. Right? You know. Uh, in verse 17, Shall he therefore continue to empty his net and mercilessly go on slaying the nations forever? Well, not forever, but for a while longer. And this is what we're talking about. See, this net that we're seeing here, you know, the world wide web, Right? Or just the whole web of uh, uh, the whole system that's been set up to capture mankind. It's all about dominating and controlling. And that, that's what they do. And, it, you know, this is nothing new. This goes all the way back to the garden. And then, and then after that, the, the tower and, you know, the first mighty man, uh, Nimrod, and all those, th this is the things that are in mankind that, that God is saving us from. It's in everybody. If you were in their position, you'd do the same thing. It would seem logical and reasonable to you. You, you would come to that conclusion. Because as we read there in Ephesians chapter 2, you, you know, that's just the way people are in their fallen state. And they follow the demon spirit, spirit that constantly works in the sons of... It's just bit, nothing personal. It's just business, right? 
All right, go to 1 John chapter 4. So, from here on out, we've been doing it for a long time, but from here on out, from this day forth, um, we are going to have to navigate this strait that we've been put in. Okay? And see, God's going to use... He's going to use mankind. Understand, Jesus isn't coming back until the seventh trumpet, till the, till the end of the Antichrist government, right? When, when he reaches the limits of God's mercy, right? Setting up that statue uh, in the, uh, where it ought not to be, okay? So until then, Jesus is not coming back. So how's he going to do? How's God going to finish this work in us? Well, He's going to do it with the Holy Spirit and His Word through the body of Christ, through human beings. Okay, in First John chapter four, verse one, beloved, do not put faith in every spirit, but test the spirits to discover whether they proceed from God, for many false prophets have gone forth into the world. All right, so what are you testing? You, you're testing some, what, what is that? What is that? No, you're testing what's coming out of their mouth. That's what we test. And, he, and he's saying, hey, don't put faith in everything. He, you test and prove it and see if it, it uh, lines up with the word, right? He said, go down to verse 5. They proceed from the world and are of the world. Therefore, it is out of the world that they speak. And the world listens and pays attention to them. Right? Like your nephews. Right? They're scared. Oh, we need to get the vaccine. Because they've been propagandized. Right? They've been fed a lot of fear and a lot of exaggeration, and, and a lot of guilt, and on and on. And so uh, they're afraid. But see, it, they, they're listening to, out of the world that they speak, and they pay attention to them. Why? Because they're still fallen. They're not a new creation yet, right? We are children of God. Who has ever is learning to know God uh, and to get an ever clear knowledge of Him listens to us. And he who is not of God does not listen or pay attention to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. You know, you, you talk to people and you tell them a little bit of what you might know because you know they can't handle too much. And every once in a while, you find somebody that, hmm, really? But most of the time, they don't want to hear that, even in the body of Christ, you know? You know, like he, he sent Ezekiel in there in chapter 2, and he said, hey, I'm not sending you to, to some foreign people. I'm sending you, for us, it would be, I'm sending you to the body of Christ. For Ezekiel, it was to Israel, right? I, hey, I'm not sending you. He said, but they're impudent and they are hard of hearing. They don't want to, don't, hey, don't tell me, don't tell me about that end time stuff. You know, that stuff just is gloom and doom and that just gets me down. And you know what? I'll just deal with it when it comes. Well, that's not how Jesus wants us to do. He doesn't want us to deal with it when it comes. He wants us to prepare ahead of time. Otherwise, he wouldn't have told us that. Right, right. He wants us to prepare ahead of time, right? There's all that revelation about the end time. You know, 27% of the Bible is prophecy. All of that is, is to prepare you for what's coming, right? Well, I got to live here now, right? I got to occupy until he comes. Well, okay, that's fine. You can occupy with the prophetic word. You can do both. In fact, you'll do a whole lot better if you do that because that's his prescription. 
God's prescription is, isn't to not get in, into it. His prescription is to get into it. If it wasn't, he wouldn't have said it. Jesus wouldn't have talked about it so much. Right? Well, you don't know. You don't know where the end times is. Well, actually, I think I do. And I think if you don't see it by now, you've really closed your eyes. And, you know, Jesus prophesied about that in Matthew chapter 13. And Isaiah prophesied about it in Isaiah chapter 6. Right? You know, tell these people. And he, they're not going to listen. Their eyes, they will shut. Their ears, they will close. Right? And he says, well, how long? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitant. You know what that tells me? Whether you listen or you don't listen, it's still going to happen. Yeah. He prophesied it. He brought it forth. Men born along by the Holy Spirit. Right? And man, when you think about it, in Acts chapter 2, they, the, the church was born. Jesus said, tarry ye in Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. They tarried in Jerusalem. Uh, there came a rushing mighty wind and tongues settled on them and they received the Holy Spirit and they spoke in tongues. And the first message that came forth was prophecy, Joel chapter 2. And he said, these men are not drunk as you say. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning, right? And he said, this, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And he was speaking of end times. So tell me, why would the very first thing when the church is born, the Holy Spirit, the long promised Holy Spirit that none of the prophets of old lived in, they weren't filled with the Holy Spirit. They were moved on from time to time, but now the church is being born, and the first thing that he brings forth is end-time prophecy. Tell me that's not important, and especially in our day. If you're not looking at it in our day, you have blinded yourself, and you need to stop it. I'm just saying. So he who listens to us is... Uh, uh, the, is the, uh, it, well, let me read it. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. You know, which do you want to walk in? You want to walk in error or do you want to walk in truth? Right? You know, if the blind lead the blind, both of them fall into the ditch. <laughs> right? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And this is what we're dealing with. This is what I'm trying to say. Um, from now on, you know, this is what we're dealing with. We're going to have to navigate our way through this uh, worldwide quagmire that the world finds itself in. And the elite think they're going to win. They think they know what they're doing. And uh, they don't, you know. You know, when, when, if, if Satan's speaking to them, he's lying because that's all he knows how to do. Right when he speaks, uh, he speaks. When he speaks, he lies because that's what's natural to him. In First Corinthians two, it says, "Now, uh, verse twelve. Now we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world. Right? That's what we had before. Yeah. Remember that? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what we had before." but the Holy Spirit who is from God, given to us that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gifts and the divine favor and blessings so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by God. And we are setting these truths forth in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Holy Spirit, combining and interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language to those who possess the Holy Spirit. See, you see why they don't listen to us, right? Because the next verse says, for the natural, non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome into his heart the gifts and teachings of the, of the uh, Spirit of God. They are folly to him. And he's incapable of knowing them for they're spiritually discerned, right? Yeah. 
So what we have to say, it may be rejected by almost everybody, but does that mean it's not true? Does it mean it's true because we say it? No, it's true because the Holy Spirit and the Word of God agree and they are and He is interpreting it for us. Right? Uh, go to Romans, uh, no, go to verse 8, 1 Corinthians 2, 6 actually. 1 Corinthians 2, 6. Yet, when we are among the full grown, uh, spiritually more uh, mature Christians who are ripe in understanding, we endure, do impart a higher wisdom uh, of the divine plan previously hidden, but is indeed not a wisdom of this present age or of this world, nor are the leaders and rulers of this world who are being brought to nothing and are doomed to pass away. See, this is what we're telling everybody. Hey, yeah, we preach gloom and doom for this present world and age. We do. Does God want to doom them? No, Jesus came and he's not willing that any should perish. You know, it's amazing. You know, and it's just the flesh. You know, I was talking to a guy today and, and his, the guy that he works for is a Muslim. And, and I was thinking about that. And uh, he's from India, and he's a Muslim. I'm thinking, wow, 600 years after Jesus came, Muhammad showed up. 600 years later, the world had the opportunity to be set free. You know, the world had the opportunity uh, to become children of God in, in truth and reality. But did they? No, because... They follow the fashion and course of that age, wow. right? Yeah. It's what appeals to the flesh, you know? That's why people like Clint Eastwood is so appealing, because it's the flesh. Flesh likes to exalt itself. Flesh likes to be cool, you know? Flesh likes to be a bad dude, you know, or whatever, whatever it is. It appeals to the flesh, your f lower nature, right? And that's how somebody like, you know, Muhammad, a, a warmonger and probably a pedophile, could, could uh, come to what it's come to. And, of course, uh, Satan helps it along, right? Of course. Uh, right, right, yeah, he, he was. Yeah, he, he, he uh, had a, uh, what do they call it, a, a, a visitation yeah. from a fallen angel. Exactly. And just like Joseph Smith, yeah. right? And, you know, Paul warned about that, you know. He, he specifically warned about uh, people puffed up by visions they've seen or things like that, right? He said, be careful of that. But rather, what we are setting Fourth is a wisdom of God once hidden and now revealed. Okay, this is what's important, which God devised and creed before the ages for our glorification. Right? And, you know, immediately Christianity goes, well, that's in heaven. That means in heaven. Right? Well, okay. Yeah, okay. You probably will be glorified there. But in, in, in uh, Revelation chapter 6, they didn't seem too glorified to me. <laughs> How long before you avenge our blood? Right? Sounds pretty angry to me. Yeah. Sounds like they were pretty disappointed. Yeah. Uh, how glorified is that? Wow. Right? Yeah. I'm just saying. They're in heaven. Right? Wow. The, what I'm saying is, hey, you know, whether you're here or you're there, Truth is truth and reality is reality. You know, you get to heaven and you think, well, we'll forget all this past on the earth. Well, they didn't. No, they're pretty angry because how long before you avenge our blood? Right? I'm just saying. None of the rulers and leaders, the rulers of this age have perceived and recognized and understood this. 
For if they had, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. Uh, go to Romans chapter 5. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we'll start at verse 9. He says, Therefore, since we are now justified um, by Christ's blood, how much more we shall be saved by him from the indignation and wrath of God? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, it is much more certain now that we are reconciled that we shall be saved and delivered from sin's dominion through his resurrection life. Okay? While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us. Right? We were enemies of God. Right, that, you know, that point I make about Israel. Look, there are no more enemies of God than anybody else that is not a new creation in Christ Jesus. Right? And they have to be told the truth just like everybody else. It has to be revealed to them. Right? Probably several people tried to tell me about Jesus. I was raised a Catholic, so I knew all about, you know, the subject uh, you know, but um, it wasn't until somebody came along later in my adult life that, that uh, you know, that word entered in there, right? It went, you know, yeah. you know that sword went, yeah. and just, it got me, right? And, and, you know, I could have, I could have uh, stayed mad, right? But, but that word got in there, you know, and reasoned with me, kind of. So I was thinking, why did I get so mad, right? Why, why did I get so angry? Because somebody told me there's none other name given among men whereby you must be saved, right? And so, you know, that word uh, got to bear some fruit, right? And see, this is what God does. See, because He's real. He's alive. His Word can penetrate any life. You know, that when they told the one group of Pharisees, they clouded up and rained all over them. Right? When they told the other group, they were cut to the heart, and they said, what, what must we do, be, do to be saved? Right? Right? Yeah. It, he's dealing with your heart, right? Uh, go to James chapter 4. But this is what we deal with. We've always had to deal with this, but it's going to become more and more critical as the days move on. Because now, just like with Europe uh, in the last century, it, it was a post Christian society. Um, America has become a post-Christian society. Uh, you know, before the pandemic, 17% of the church, uh, people went to church in America. 17%. 83% of Americans did not attend, attend church regularly. Okay? When we were growing up, everybody went to church. Right? I mean, you knew very few people, really, that, that didn't attend church sort of regularly anyway, right? 83%, and that was before. And let me tell you something, too. After it, a whole lot of the people who used to go, that 17%, they don't go no more. Why? Because forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, as is the habit of some people. See, you get into the habit, well, I just watch it on TV. After a while, you ain't watching it on TV. You flipped over to the sports channel or whatever it is that floats your boat, right? You're not watching it anymore, 
right? As is the habit of some people, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. What, we don't live in the great apostasy? I, I beg to differ with you. I think we do live in the great apostasy. All right, you know, when Jesus told that parable in Luke chapter 18, at the end he says, yeah, and when I return, will I find faith in the earth? Because he already knows the end from the beginning. He knows what it's going to be like. He knows how Satan is. He knows the world, the flesh, and the devil. You know, that's a threefold cord. You know, we have to fight against that. But that's a free, threefold cord that can be broken. But it has to be broken with the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Right? And our commitment. And he says, um, what leads to strife? James 4.1. And how do conflicts originate among you? Do not they... Uh, do not... Uh, do they not arise from your sensual desires that are ever warring in your bodily members, right? He's talking to the body of Christ here, <laughs> right? You know, the, the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak, <laughs> right? You're jealous and covet what others have and your desires go unfulfilled, so you become murderers. To hate is to murder as far as your hearts are concerned. You burn with envy and anger and do not, are not able to obtain gratification and contentment you seek, so you fight in war. You do not have because you do not ask, right? Or you ask for the wrong thing, right? You know, Solomon asked for the right thing. He asked for wisdom. He said, hey, man, I don't know how to come in and go out. And because... God said, well, because you asked for wisdom and not riches, I'm going to give you both. Well, that sure messed him up, didn't it? <laughs> wow. At the end of his life, he was like, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. You know, one wife would have been enough for him, but he just had to have at least 2,000. <laughs> I mean, wow. But, you know, anyway... Or you do ask God and yet fail to receive because you ask was wrong, evil purpose and selfish motives. Hey, look, the whole prosperity thing, Jesus took care of that when he said, hey, I know that you need all these things. And, and the Father will provide it all for you. But we get this twisted thing. Well, hey, wow, that's a gravy train. I'll just, I'll yank that cord and God will just... <laughs> You know, he'll just lavish all the riches upon me. And you know what? The only ones getting rich are the ones preaching that stuff. Because people are gullible and they get, uh, they fantasize in their minds about what they could have. And well, I'll sow into that, right? And the next thing you know, they're complaining because their jet don't cost $60 million dollars. I got an old cheap $30 million jet. <laughs> wow. I'm just saying. Your intention is to spend it in sensual pleasures. You are like unfaithful wives having illicit love affairs with the world, world breaking your marriage vow to God. Do you not know that being the world's friend is being God's enemy? So whoever chooses to be a friend of the world and take uh, of the world takes his stand as an enemy of God. Here God reconciled us into the family of God. He calls us his sons, right? And we're supposed to embrace Christian nationalism and become a friend of the world. You see that? That don't make sense. See, but that is the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. And it isn't because you can't, it's because you won't. See, you, it, it, do, do you think Fox News, well, I pick on Fox News, right? Because, you know, I pick on conservative Republicans. Hey, I think the Democrats are even worse, but I pick on conservative Republicans because 
I think you should uh, overcome that. These people are not speaking to you by the Spirit of the Lord. I mean, they don't call it fox for nothing. Yeah. Didn't he tell Herod? He goes, go tell that fox. That's what Jesus said. You go tell that fox. You know, Jesus had him figured out. You know, he called him a fox. Well, you know, the, the, the fox is guarding the hen house. Mm -hmm. Right? And they've been laying this stuff on us for decades now. Right? And Christianity has just eaten it up. And the thing of it is, if nothing ever changes, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are two sides of the same coin. And what they do is they take social issues and their, their social hot buttons and they manipulate the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they pick abortion and gay rights and all those kind of things. And they, all they're doing is manipulating the population to stay in power. In the meantime, the elite, right, are paying those politicians off. And they've got them blackmailed or whatever it is, however they do to control them. And the American people lose. And that's what's happened. And the church has been manipulated and controlled by the media, by the politicians. And this is what's happened in America. And we wonder, wow, you know, uh, we, 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 this country's going to hell in a handbasket. Well, you know what? The country's already been taken over. It's, already, it's not going to be taken over. It's been taken over. It's taken over. Just go walk around society. It's been taken over. You can see it. It's, the fruit is everywhere. And it's bad fruit. It's bad fruit. It's a pagan, anti-Christ, anti-God uh, society. Now. It is. And you know what? All those people out there that have, have been paganized, they want what you have. They just don't know it yet. Because God has written it. He puts it in their heart. He tells them, hey, you're wrong, and I do exist, and you need to change. And everybody knows that. I'm just saying. All right, go to uh, Psalm 127. Hey, what, what am I telling you? I'm telling you, you are blessed. You're so blessed. Stay blessed. <laughs> Stay blessed. Don't fall for all this Christian nationalism. It's a bunch of baloney. It's a bunch of manipulation. It is. Oh, we're going we're gonna to rise up and take it back. Oh, Trump's coming back. Even if he did, the country is antichrist. Even if he did. So what? But he ain't going to. He's not. He's not coming back. He's not coming back. It's an illusion. They are playing you. They're playing you. Oh, trust the plan. <laughs> wow. See, look. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. Our kingdom is not of this world. If Jesus' kingdom is not of this world, how is it that ours is? Hmm? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. And he told the disciples, the kingdom of God is within you. Right? We'll get to this. Uh, Psalm 127, except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain to build it. Think about that. Right? Oh, we're, we're going we're gonna to take the country back. 
uh, we're going to take dominion, right, on the seven hills, right? We're going to take dominion and take it back. That is a bunch of baloney. That is not true. That has no place in Scripture does it talk like that. No place. It does not say that. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain to build it. You're not going to rebuild it with the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, or the Libertarian Party, or any other party. You're not going to do it. Jesus is judging Babylon. The United States of America isn't Babylon. It's part of Babylon. It kind of leading the way, though, I've got to say. It's pretty pathetic. But, hey... Why wouldn't it? It's where, the, it's where the money has been. You know where the money's going now. You know, the, the, the real rich of the world, you know what they're teaching their kids? How to speak Mandarin. That's what they teach their kids, how to speak Chinese. Because that's where the money's going. Right? Yeah. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wakes but in vain. Hello, watchman. Hmm. Right? Unless the Lord keeps it, they wake, but in vain. Right? You're not going to build a house on, uh, you know, Fox News type of stuff or OAN or whatever, any of those others. You're not going to. That's the natural man. It's the natural mind. That's not the Lord's house. It's not. The body of Christ is the Lord's house. All right? We're in the world. We're not of the world. We can be good citizens while we're here, right? And we are. We're the best citizens. If, if everybody in the country was like you people, this would be a great country. It would be a wonderful place to live in, right? It would be a blessed place. But it's not. It's getting very, very cursed. Right? And there's a whole system that's set in place to enslave everyone. The economic system, the medical system, it enslaves everyone. It's designed to do that. Right? We have a better healer. We do. And he... he he can heal us of all of our diseases. It's His will. Right? And not only that, when you walk with Him, you don't get the diseases because when you don't walk with Him is why you get the diseases. When you walk in sin and stress and anxiety and all that, it takes a toll on your body. But when you walk in the Spirit and you have God's peace, you are less susceptible to all those things. But even if you get them, He is able. He is. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Where do I want to go here? Yeah, unless the Lord builds a house. Well, how is the Lord building the house? Well, what did He say to Peter? Who do you say that I am? Right? And Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but my Father who's in heaven. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. And on that, the gates of hell don't, does not prevail against. See, God has so much more for us. Yeah, we've come a ways down the road with him. He's given us a lot, but he has a lot more. We have not arrived. You know, Jesus said, he who be, it says there in Philippians 1, 6, he who began a good work in you will continue that good work right up into the time of his return. Okay? Well, if that's the case, then we need to be engaged right up into the time of his return. If he's going to be continuing that good work, then he knows ahead of time that's what it takes right up into the time of his return. And since Jesus is not going to be present until the time of his return, how is he going to do it? He's going to do it through his house, the church, the, stay, the pillar and stay of the truth. That's what the church is supposed to be. The church is the pillar and stay of the truth. Okay? 
He's going to use men and women to do it in the church. Yeah, with the Word and the Holy Spirit, but with human beings. All right? Because He's not coming back until then. So until then, why is it so hard for, to understand why the, man, why the man-child would come back? Right? Paul went up. He came back. Why can't the man-child go up and come back? And especially since we have Micah chapter 5, where it says that he, he will uh, 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 protect and, and feed God's flock, right, in the time of the end. See, God wants to do it through his people. That's the way he's going to do it. You know, this same Jesus whom you see go shall so come in like manner, but he doesn't come until the very end at the seventh trumpet. Until then, it's the church that's going to do that work. Right? And uh, let's, let me, I want to read something. Let's see if I can find it in my notes. Uh, oh, yeah. Look at Luke chapter 12. Yep, yep. Luke chapter 12. And we will start at verse 15. Luke 12, 15. And Jesus said to them, Guard yourselves and keep free from all covetousness. Uh, the immoderate desire for wealth, the greedy longing to have more. Right, the American dream, right? Let's make America like it used to be. Well, that's how it used to be. <laughs> right? For man's life does not consist in and is not derived from possessing overflowing abundance or that which is over and above his needs. Wow. Wow! Jesus said that? I thought he wanted to really bless our socks off till our cup runneth over, right? Till we're sipping out of the saucer, right? Because he wasn't talking about our cup running over being about possessions and money. He was talking about him, the reality or the revelation of himself, right? Right? So he's saying, hey, you know, uh, it's not... Uh, life is not derived from overflowing abundance over and above our needs. But that's what everybody's looking for. That's what every... Uh, tell me a person that doesn't want to win the lottery. Says, I don't want to win the lottery. I know one person, my mom. She says, I hope we... Ne they play the lottery. She goes, I hope we never win. It would ruin us. Because she, she knows enough to know that. Right? She's the only one I've heard say that. She said, I hope we don't. She had a guy call the house with a Jamaican accent. I wish I could do the accent, but I'll refrain. But he, you know, he told her, oh, Mrs. Jordan, you've won the publisher's clearinghouse. You won five, $5 million. And my mom said, oh, honey, we, we're old and we, we have all we're ever going to need. Why don't you just give that to somebody else? That was what she said. But ma'am, in his Jamaican accent, it was fake, of course. Yeah. You know, you, all you got to do is give me your bank account and we'll put it in there. Yeah. Give us your number, right? Uh -huh. All right. Well, this is what everyone wants. They want overflowing abundance, right? Uh -huh. and, and Jesus is saying, life ain't about that. You get that? You know what you're going to do? You're going to live the rest of your life in the flesh. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you're going to do. Right? And what, whatever it is that floats your boat in the flesh, that's what you're going to do on steroids. And Jesus said, that ain't life. Right? He, and he told them a parable. 
The land of a rich man was fertile and yielded plentifully. And he considered and debated with himself, What shall I do? I have no place in which to gather together my harvest. And he said, I will do this. I will pull down my storehouses and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and produce and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many good things laid up, enough for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself merrily. Right? God bless you, merry gentlemen. Right? But God said to him, You fool, this very night the messengers will demand your soul of you and all the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with the one who continues to lay up and hoard possessions for himself and is not rich in his relationship to God. Right? Mm -hmm. That is the flesh and that is the world system and that is the spirit of the world. Right? And everybody in the generations to come think they're entitled to that. Man, I remember when we were kids. People didn't have nothing. And you know what? We were really blessed. For the whole summer, we had white t-shirts and cut-off jeans and a pair of kids. And today, if you don't have a logoed colored t-shirt, you know, you're a weirdo. I still wear white t-shirts and then my grandkids are pops. I, your white t-shirt pops. I'm like, so what? Right, exactly. Hundred dollar tennis shoes. It's ridiculous. Right. Hundred, yeah. Hundred dollar tennis shoes. That was ten years ago, right? Well, it just goes to show you, I don't care anything about it. I really don't. I don't care anything about it. But what I'm saying is, this is the world, and it's crept into the church, uh -huh. right? And the media has just saturated everybody with this stuff, and you have to fight it. You have to fight it. You don't just absorb it. And see, you become a friend of the world, you're an enemy with God. An enemy! Well, I'm in the body of Christ. I'm born again. Yeah, but you act like his enemy. Right? Wow. Um, let's see, where do I want to go here? Let's go to Hebrews uh, chapter 11. Oh, yeah, this is good. Hebrews 11. Love that chapter. See, let me tell you, you got to fight it because there's going to come a time, you know, it's easy if you prepare ahead of time. You make your decisions, your little decisions over a long period of time, decision after decision after decision. If you're not making those decisions, you're going to come up to a gate and you're going to go, they're going to offer you, hey, you either go this way or you go that way. And that decision is going to be a tough decision to make because it'll probably cost you your life. Right? It's either going to cost you your physical life or it might cost you your eternal life. That's what's coming. You know, you're, you're either going to bow and take a mark or you can't buy or sell. They're only telling you that. They're preparing everybody for that. Right? Hey, if you don't, if you don't vaccine up, you know, you, you can't go anywhere. You can't take a flight now. You can't take a cruise. Right? I've been on cruises. It's, you know, it's fun, but you know what? Uh, it's not that important. <laughs> All right? It's beautiful scenery, but it's really not that important. And, and I'm telling you, they are pushing it. I even saw on the news the other day, oh, oh, the children are starting to get it. The children, they're starting to get it. You see the fear-mongering. It's just, it's pathetic. 
It really is. And people eat this stuff up. Okay. Verse 8. Hebrews 11, 8. Urged on by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and went. He went forth to a place in which he was destined to receive as an inheritance. And he went, although he didn't know or trouble his mind where he was good to go. All right? And prompted by faith, he dwelt as a temporary resident in the land, which was designated in the promise of God in a strange country, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs with him of the same promise. And he was waiting expectantly and looking forward to the city which has fixed and firm foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Okay? The builder is God. You know, he says, what did he say over there in 1 Corinthians chapter 3? You know, you are God's building, right? Right? You're God's building. Okay? Well, you know, that, that definition of that word, build, builder or build, is... Um, to my other note. It is a number 5079, and it's uh, tech nights is the word, and it means an artisan, a founder, or a craftsman. You, you know what Jesus, you know, when his mother found him after they couldn't find him, and he said, you know, know you not that I'm to be about my father's business? Well, the father's business is he's a builder. God is a builder. He's an artisan. God's an artist. He's a craftsman, and he's building you. That's what he's doing. He's a sculptor. Mm -hmm. He's building you. And you think, well, how can he do that? Well, he can do it with his word and by his spirit. He can make you what you ought to be. This is what God is. It comes, the, the word is, um, yeah, tech nights. It comes from, it's number 5079, from, from 5078. Um, art or trade uh, it's his occupation alright you know you are God's work of art and I'm just saying it's real it's a real thing you are really his work of art he is making you into something incredible if you will stay with the program don't quit the program it pays off huge, right? Right? Uh, okay, let's see. Before I go on. Yeah, you know, when he said that, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Well, that, that's a different word for build. It's oikodomio, right? Like a dome, you know what a dome is, you know, like, like the AT&T stadiums, like a dome. Yeah. Or we used to call the one in New Orleans, the dome. The Superdome, right? Oikodomio, to be a house builder. Architecture, uh, to edify. It comes from 1430 Doma. An edifice, you know. When he says, rise like an edifice, higher, higher, praying in the Holy Spirit, God knows what he's talking about. You know, Praying in the Holy Spirit, I should do it a lot more. I'll put it that way. Because every time I do it, I get edified. I don't know why I don't do it more. I, there's an interesting thing about that word, that autodomio is the same word we get the English word academy. Oh, really? Huh. So we're in God's academy. We're in God's academy, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's architect, architecture. Ar the architect and builder is God. Right? So here they were looking for a forward to a city. Abraham and Sarah, right? With Isaac and Jacob. Uh, in verse 14, he says, uh, Now those people who talked as they did, 
as they did, show plainly that they are in search of a fatherland. If they had been thinking with homesick remembrance of that country from which they had been immigrants, it's no different from us going, hey, we want to make America great again. It, you're looking back going, hey, I wish it was like that. And God's going, don't do that. Don't look back. That is the world. It's coming to pass. It is gone its cycle, right? And he's going, no, look to the fatherland, right? Look ahead. You know, I, I, get, I have been criticized about this. You know, it's some golden daybreak, or you're always just talking about the, well, I got to live right now. Well, duh. You know, duh. I get up every morning too, just like you do. Yet, yeah, duh, we do have to live right now. But you can do both. You don't have to do one or the other. In fact, if you do both, you will, your hope will develop. And that's what God wants to do is develop our hope. We think hope is not to be developed. No, our hope needs to be developed and prophecy will do it. Okay, uh, they would have found constant opportunity to return to it. But the truth is that they were yearning for and aspiring for a better and more desirable country that is a heavenly one. Oh, oh, well, that means, you know, when I die and go to heaven. No, wrong again. Wrong again. Because, see, we're not talking about just heaven over there. We're talking about thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. All right? We're looking of a kingdom within us that becomes reality. Right? That when we see him face to face, we will be like him. Right? For that reason, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For uh, he has prepared a city for them. Okay, um, go to chapter 12, Hebrews 12. Verse 18. For you have not come to a mountain that can be touched, that is ablaze with fire to gloom and darkness in a raging storm, to the blast of a trumpet. Right? Remember, like Moses did, right? To the blast of the trump and the voice of the words make the listeners beg that nothing more be said to them for they couldn't bear the commandment. It's so awful and terrifying, even Moses said, I'm terrified. But rather, you have come to Mount Zion, even the city of the living God, right? Uh, the heavenly Jerusalem and to countless multitudes of angels in festal gathering, and to the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to the God who is judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous who have been made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood which speaks of a better and noble, more noble and more gracious message in the blood of Abel, you know, who spoke out for vengeance. What am I saying here? I'm saying that this is what we're looking for. The world is in Babylon. Is Babylon physical? Yeah, but it's also spiritual. It says we haven't received the spirit that belongs to the world. That's a spirit, right? We, sp we speak, we receive the spirit of God combining, interpreting tr spiritual truth with spiritual language. We are in Mount Zion. We are the church of the firstborn. Right? That's what it's saying right here. This is what we don't look back. We don't look back. No, we don't look back to America the beautiful back in the 1960s. You remember what it was like? I had a blast. I mean, it was just fun. But, but I was a 10-year-old kid. It's fun for a 10-year-old kid. It, it was clean life. It was good life. It was family and all that stuff. It was good for me. For a lot of people, it wasn't. It was, it was a disaster. Okay, but still it was natural. 
even the best it could be, right? It was just natural. And God's calling us to something much higher than that. But it's here. It doesn't have to be in heaven. No, it's here and now. All right? And we got to look back at that and go, okay, that was the past, but God's calling us forward. All right? And it's Zion, and he wants to develop your hope. It says they were yearning for a fatherland. They were yearning for that city. What you and I partake of now, they, they, they didn't have near the revelation that we have, right? But God still put it on their hearts. That was like 4,000 years ago, a long time ago. And now here we are at the culmination of the age. Go to Psalm 102. Here at the culmination of the age, when God is going to complete this, He's going to do it. And everything in the world is against you to stop you from staying with it. And I'm telling you, stay with it. Amen. Stay with it. I'm, hey, Steve, stay with it. Yeah. Don't give up on that. Right? He's given us a revelation. He's given us a vision. Without a vision, the people perish. Right? We got to stick with our vision. Right? Yeah, that's good. All right, Psalm 102, start at verse 16. When the Lord builds up Zion, he will appear in his glory. All right, this is what it's coming to. See, way back there, Abraham and them, they were looking forward to this. But see, when the Lord builds it up, He's going to appear. All right? He will regard the plea of the destitute and will not despise their prayer. Let this be recorded for the generation yet unborn, that a people yet to be created shall praise the Lord. For He looked down from the height of His sanctuary. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth to hear the sighing and groaning of the prisoner and to loose those who are appointed to death. Praise God. So that men may declare the name of the Lord in Zion in His praise in Jerusalem when peoples are gathered together and the kingdoms to worship and serve the Lord. You know, when he's talking about gathering, that's the harvest. When people are gathered together in the harvest, to worship and serve Him and praise the Lord. This is our future. It is our inheritance. It's our inheritance. I can't help it if the world doesn't see it. You know, frankly, it's not my fault. It's not. It's Satan and it's their own fault. And it's not your but all we can do is put it out there. We can lead a horse to water and whether they drink or not, that's between them and God, right? And all we can do is to continue and to go on with Him and forgetting what lies behind, we press on to the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Right? So Father, help us do this. Help us to endure to the very end, Father, that we might all be saved, spirit, soul, and body. And we just ask that you have mercy on the United States of America and that, that you would raise up the righteous and put down the wicked in Jesus' name.